Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. We are continuing with chapter nine, which is on mechanical waves. So yesterday we talked about simple harmonic motion, and then we talked about spring mass system, and then we also talked about pendulum, and then we proved that a spring mass system either is horizontal or vertical. It is a simple harmonic motion punya system, and also a pendulum that travels at small angles is also a simple harmonic motion system. When we know that they are simple harmonic motion, therefore we have a certain equation that we can use and relate to those systems. Lah, okay? And then we also applied uh, the conservation of energy and we discovered that um, uh, the total energy of that spring mass system or that pendulum is always constant and ada equation tertentu yang kita dah belajar yesterday. So we're going to continue. Some of it is related to simple harmonic motion, but most of it is a new stuff lah. Okay, so today we're going to talk about waves. So a disturbance traveling, a disturbance traveling in a medium is called a traveling pulse or a traveling wave. So if you look at this, where am I? Is it here? No, it is this one. So if you look at this, dude. Oh no. Sorry about that. It's not connected. Okay. So if you look over here, a disturbance is first initially caused by this guy. So they nudge his friend on the on his right side, left side. He nudged his friend next to him. So this guy, they ringgit macam main-main kan? So they nudge kawan dia. Orang sebelah pun nudge kawan dia. So it's basically a disturbance traveling to the right. And we also have this situation. This thing is compressing this is like a column of particles right this is a column of particles and you have this like um, object that is trying to compress the particles inside this column so when it compresses it causes disturbance at the front part of the column and that disturbance travels travels to the right side and then again this one we flick a string that disturbance travels to the right. Now, the one thing that I want you to notice is that despite the disturbance, despite that thing traveling, the pulse traveling, everyone else, I mean, the particles, the people, the string did not move, did not um, change position. They moved, they moved up and down or like left and right a little bit, but they did not change position. If A is over here, Akmal is over here, then Akmal is still over there. Who is Akmal? Akmal is not from this class. Um, and if this particle <clears throat> moves to the right and to the left, after that disturbance, it comes back to its original position, same like the string. After that disturbance is gone, it is back to its original position. So they don't move despite the pulse traveling. Okay. So next, a traveling pulse propagates the disturbance along its path and transfers the energy from one point to another. So the particles are not moving, but the energy is. So that is how you see that motion. The motion is actually the energy propagating, but the particles, the people, and also the string remains at the same place after the disturbance goes away. And this is like similar to a domino effect as the domino falls, you know that the domino is not going to move somewhere else. It's just going to be here, but it will fall. And because of the disturbance, and the disturbance to propagate uh, from left to right or right to left, it depends on the direction. So a continuous repetitive disturbance gives rise to a continuous propagation of the pulses called waves. So the one that we talked about earlier is not repetitive. This guy nudges his friend, this guy nudges his friend, and so, on, so, and so on and so forth. And then we are going to assume that the pulse ends here or the disturbance ends there. 
And then this guy compresses, we assume that the disturbance ends here. Kita ingat dah tutup buku kan? But there is a situation where this thing is repetitive and repetitive disturbance is called waves. Okay, so that was pulse and now we're talking about waves. Waves is when it becomes repetitive. So this guy, um, not this guy, this object is doing the compression repetitively. Therefore, we have like disturbance going on repetitively and we call this as waves moving. And again, this one, um, I think this is called a fork. I think, what is it? I forgot. Okay, fork lah, tepang fork. And then this fork is vibrating. So it vibrates the particles in the air. And because of that vibration, you hear something like ding, gitu kan? So this is actually waves traveling, goes to your ear. You hear that ding from the fork. And this can happen like a, a, for a long time because the vibration lambat nak, lambat nak stop kan. So you assume that it is repetitive lah. And then you keep on doing it. So it becomes a repetitive. And the same case over here, I don't know what this is. We're going to assume it's a string. We're going to assume like it's a guitar. Okay, so guitar punya string is very tight, right? So when you flick it, ada bunyi ting juga kan? So that is also a wave traveling and it becomes music. Okay, so all waves result in, sorry, all waves result from a disturbance. So it starts from a disturbance and then it becomes wave if it is repetitive. Disturbance are propagated in some medium, either it can be in air, it can be in water, it can be also in solid. So the motion of the disturbance are associated with the transport of energy. And again, I told you the particles, the people, the string, they don't move. They're just propagating the disturbance or they're just propagating the energy. They're moving the energy. They are the medium that transports the energy, but they don't move. Energy travels, not the medium particles. Mechanical wave is the transfer of energy without an accompanying transfer of matter. Okay. Um, okay, so this is just repeating. So this is another example of uh, the disturbance traveling, but the particles not traveling, they only transport the energy. So it starts from this guy over here, dia bergelik kat situ, and then because he moved, so the next guy over, the next guy to him also moves and it travels. And you can see that this yellow particle Walaupun the pulse keeps on moving, I mean the disturbance keeps on traveling to the right, you can see that the yellow particle is remaining where it is. It's just there. Okay, so this is um, what it means when, this is what it means when mechanical wave is a transfer of energy without an accompanying transfer of matter. The energy transfers to the right, but the matter stays where it is. Okay, so we have two types of waves that we need to learn. So the first one is called transverse wave. The second one is called longitudinal wave. For a transverse wave, we can um, imagine it like a string and we're like going up and down, going up and down. So you would get something like this type of shape. So the each element that is disturbed moves in a direction perpendicular to the wave motion. The wave is always traveling to the right or to the left, but the particles ataupun the elements that make up the medium goes up and down. It goes up and down. So when it goes up and down, while the wave is traveling to the right, this is called transverse. The wave travels to the right, but the motion of the particles is perpendicular. Okay, and then in longitudinal wave, the elements of the medium undergo displacement parallel to the motion of the wave. So I'm assuming that the wave is traveling this way. And the motion of the particles is basically parallel. So wave is to the right and the particles of this string is either moving to the right and to the left. Now let's go back to our diagram just now. So this one we can say that it is a longitudinal because it doesn't go up and down, it only goes left and right, which is parallel to the direction of the wave. So this is a longitudinal wave. 
And then another example is this guy. Wave is moving this way and the air particles is just moving to the left or to the right. So we know that this is a longitudinal wave. Ada tak yang apa nama dia? Transverse. Boleh lah kata dia transverse. So it's transverse. It, the particles ataupun the people, the people in this case is the particle. The particle is moving up and down. But the wave is traveling to the right. So they are perpendicular. Okay. So sometimes um, waves can be a combination. It can be a combination of longitudinal and also transverse. It doesn't have to be like one, one or the other. It can be a combination. So sometimes when it looks confusing, you're not sure if it's a longitudinal or transverse wave. It can be a, it can be a superposition of both. So, for example, water, water yang kita jatuhkan something, the waves travel, you can see that there is left and right movement, you can also see up and down movement in the water. So that is a combination of both, you can try it. Water has that property where it has two types of waves happening. Okay, so transverse, um, they are trying to say that, um, imagine a snake, the snake, it moves forward, but the Particles of the snake, we're going to call it particle because Susan has said it Particles of the snake is going this way, which is perpendicular. So, transverse. And then untuk this one, I think this is, I think this is ulat bulu. I'm not sure. We're going to assume it's ulat bulu. So, this ulat bulu is tra traveling to the right. Tapi tak ada bulu pun kan? I don't know. It's some, some type of gross Thing. So it's moving to upwards, right? It's this is this is the motion. Okay, yang tadi tu this is the motion, and the particles goes particles of this insect goes left and right, left and right. They are the compression, uh, release compression release untuk dia bergerak. So that is longitudinal motion. I'm sorry, longitudinal wave punya motion. Okay, so just an analogy. So now we're talking about the characteristics of wave. Okay, so let's take a look at this first diagram over here, number one. So any element P, black dot, on the rope moves in a direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave. So you can see here that there is a hand trying to flick the string and the string are the pulse. And the pulse travels to the right, travels to the right. And then you are observing this point called P. The point called P ni, as the pulse propagates, the point P goes up and then it goes down again. So you can see that this pulse is a transverse. A pulse traveling on the stretch string is a transverse wave. And if you keep on doing it, it becomes repetitive and it is a transverse wave. Okay, and then the next one, the shape of the pulse is approximately unchanged as it travels to the right. So you can see again, this guy is flicking the string and this pulse travels and it maintains the same shape. There's no change. Uh, the shape is maintained. So this is the property of a wave or a pulse as it travels through a medium, as it travels through a medium, the same medium, contohnya in this case is this, the medium is the string, the shape will not change. And if it is a transverse type of wave, you know that the particle will go up and down perpendicular to the motion of the wave. Okay, so next one, longitudinal pula. Oh, sorry, ada lagi transverse kat sini. Let me make this smaller. Okay, oops, oops, okay. So this is a transverse wave um, of a string, sorry, of a spring. So you are doing up and down, up and down motion. This guy moves like this. The spring goes up and down, up and down, but the wave travels to the right. We know this. And then the next one, as the hand pumps back and forth, you're pushing, you're stretching, you're pushing, you're stretching, you're doing a compression punya movement. Uh, compressed regions alternate, stretched regions, both in space and time. So you can see that as you're pushing it, stretching it, pushing it, stretching it, that compression will travel to the right. 
this is your longitudinal wave. Sometimes waves can be a combination of both transverse and longitudinal. We talked about this. Ocean waves exhibit a superposition of both type of waves. Okay, so this is a picture of a wave. This looks like a transverse wave, right? Okay, so this pattern is called a sinusoidal curve. It's a sinusoidal. We call this uh, for things that look like a sine or a cosine. We call it sinusoidal curve. The same as in simple harmonic motion. Yeah, curve. Okay, so the brown curve can be thought of as a snapshot. So it's talking about this brown curve. Okay, imagine that this wave is traveling, but you take a picture of it. Untuk bagi dia stop lah kan, kita nak, kita nak tengok rupa dia kan. So you are flicking a string and you ask your friend, hey tangkap gambar aku jap. So you take a picture of that, um, you know, that wave. So it looks like this brown string. So let's say we call this um, happening at time equals to zero. The blue curve is a snapshot of the same traveling wave at a later time. So you know, you're still doing this and then like two seconds later, you ask, okay, tangkap gambar aku lagi sekali. So this is the snapshot at a later time. And you can see that they are different. So they, the, the wave travels lah. This picture can also be used to represent a wave on water. In such case, a high point would correspond to the crest of the wave and low point to the throw of the wave. Mm, okay. So what, what this sentence is saying is that when you observe a wave, ada ombak kan? Ombak macam tu. This is called the crest and this is called the throw. Dia cakap sama kan? Macam ni. Tu je ayat dia maksud dia. So a one-dimensional sinusoidal wave traveling to the right with the speed of V, the brown curve is a snapshot at time equal to zero and the blue curve is at a later time. So you need to understand that this wave it's not static. It keeps on moving. So when you try to look at it at a different time, most likely it's a different shape. So this is something very important because nanti kita akan describe it mathematically and it has relation to time. Okay, moving on. So the same waveform can be used to describe a longitudinal wave. Just now I told you, this is a picture of a wave. It looks like a transverse wave. However, the same diagram can be used to describe a longitudinal wave. For example, this is a longitudinal wave motion. Okay, longitudinal wave. You can see that this is compression, compression, and the other part is stretching, stretching, stretching. So you know that this is, um, so kalau kita nak map it to the sinusoidal curve, the compression will correspond to peaks ataupun crest. The compression part will correspond to the peaks and the stretching part will correspond to the um, troughs. I should call crest and troughs actually. Okay, so compression, dia mampat. Mampat tu akan jadi peak yang tinggi. So benda yang tak mampat, dia akan ke bawah lah. You call this as trough. And you call this as crest. Uh, let me write this nicely. Okay. Mm. Let's use orange. Why is this too big? This is called crest. Why am I using this? Crest. And this is going to be called true. Okay, benda yang deep tu is called true. Okay, so often called a density wave over or a pressure wave because the crest where the spring coils are compressed are regions of high density and the troughs are where the coils are stretched or regions of low density. So kat sini dia low density sebab dia stretched, particles dia regang, so low density. And then when you compress it, it has high density because all the particles are squished together, you know that there's a lot in one space. So this is high density. High density corresponds to the crest. Okay. So again, um, transverse, uh, both transverse and longitudinal wave can be described as sinusoidal curve. Walaupun sinusoidal curve looks like a transverse, 
for transverse wave, you know when it's going up, therefore the sinusoidal curve also goes up, right? Sama je lah. But for longitudinal, the compression part corresponds to the crest and vice versa. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the amplitude and wavelength of a wave. So we have a blade over here. We have a blade. Is it called the blade? Mm, okay lah, blade lah. So as the blade vibrates, you flick it and then drrr, again. I think you've seen this, but I don't know what it's called. So as the blade vibrates, again, but it is connected to a string. So you know that this vibration will also cause the string to move up and down, up and down. And this guy, it moves up and down as well, right? And it looks like simple harmonic motion. Kenapa simple harmonic motion pula tiba-tiba? Sebab it moves in the same path and it oscillates at the same time. It has a constant oscillation and it has the same path and that is a simple harmonic motion. So this guy, dia cakap okay lah nak vibrate simple harmonic motion. Why not? Dia cakap. So it vibrates, vibrates in the same path in the same path and at the same time constant speed, constant oscillation I mean. So this thing, they'll vibrate the string as well and this string also oscillates like a simple harmonic motion. You can't see it but I'm going to show you how. So this P, let's talk about this point P. This point P as it as the wave travels it goes up and down, up and down in the same path at the same time, at the same speed, sorry. It travels in the same path and at a constant speed. So you know that it also satisfies simple harmonic motion, but only the point P, only particles of this string are obeying the simple harmonic motion because it is going at, through the same path and the same constant speed. Um, Itu saja nak relate dengan simple harmonic motion. So for a wave, for a wave, we have something called amplitude as well. Simple harmonic motion, what was our amplitude? Our amplitude was whatever equilibrium position that we had. This is our A and then dia patah balik and then dia patah balik ke sini. This is our minus A then dia patah balik and then we go back to our initial position and this is one cycle. This was our SHM that we talked about. I told you, you had to have four amplitudes. You had to complete four amplitudes, right? So the length that you have to go from the initial point, travel and then go back to your initial point, that is one cycle. That is one period for your simple harmonic motion. We talked about this yesterday. Harap ni ingat lagi lah. <clears throat> so how does this relate to the wave? The wave pun ada cycle, it also has a period, it also has amplitude. Now, we defined amplitude as the maximum displacement from its equilibrium position or from its um, equilibrium position. Maximum displacement from equilibrium. Eh, what is that? Equilibrium. <clears throat> okay, so sama juga for a wave, this is our equilibrium position and the maximum displacement is called the amplitude. So this is going to be positive A, this is going to be minus amplitude, minus A. Again, amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. The definition is the same for simple harmonic motion and also for a wave. So this is something yang patutnya dah jadi senang lah sebab kita tahu amplitude ni just displacement. And then for a wavelength, lambda, it's called lambda, is the distance between two successive points that behave identically. Now, let's erase this and just call it one cycle. So wavelength is one cycle. So one cycle, you complete one cycle, this is one wavelength. One cycle, complete one wavelength. One cycle, uh, you complete one cycle in a period T, right? So for lambda, you complete this in time period, in time capital T, one period. So what is lambda? Lambda is the distance of one complete cycle. 
the distance of one complete cycle ataupun the distance the tra the wave travels in one complete cycle one complete cycle okay and then we have amplitude the maximum displacement from the equilibrium so this is like huru hara kejap hmm this is amplitude okay let me use a different color lah okay this is amplitude minus a this is amplitude positive a and this is lambda lambda or wavelength this is also achieved in one t one cycle one lambda one t okay so now we're going to talk about the speed of the wave just now we talked about the amplitude and what is lambda now we're going to talk about the speed of the wave now lambda you know that lambda is in meters because we're talking about distance right distance so we want to know what is the speed of lambda so v is our typical equation velocity velocity is the change of displacement over the change in time now we know that lambda is in meters so i can substitute this into my x and lambda is achieved in time t right because this is one period this is one cycle one the distance in one cycle so this is distance and this is time period so you can substitute the x for lambda and you can substitute the t for capital t which is period so you know that one over t is actually frequency so you have this new equation v is equal to lambda frequency so velocity of a wave is related to your lambda and also your frequency the unit is meter per second lambda is in meter frequency is per second this is per second sama je so again um this is the same thing mm. so velocity of a wave is just basically how fast the wave can travel and we use this equation v equals to lambda f to find out what is the speed okay and what is the frequency of a wave so the frequency of a wave is the number of oscillation a waves can do or a wave can complete per unit time so if it completes one cycle in 20 seconds let's say one cycle ataupun one lambda in 20 seconds therefore you know that your frequency is 1 over 20 1 over 20 is 0. Point, i don't know 0. 0.5 0. 0.05 i don't know <laughs> where is my calculator now everyone's going to know that i don't do math in my head okay 1 over 20 is 0. 0.05 hertz okay so it, frequency just simply means how long does it take for you to complete one cycle so if you complete one cycle in 20 seconds then one over 20 if you complete it you need a longer time to complete the cycle what happens let's say you need 50 seconds to complete a cycle so one over 50 how what is your frequency your frequency is 0 0.02 hertz or 0 0.02 cycle per second you only achieve 0 0.02 cycle per second, which is a little bit only. Okay, so that is your frequency. And of course, when you have frequency, you also have angular is interchangeable. Uh, omega is just 2 pi f. If you know your frequency, you should know your omega. Omega is radians per second, if you don't remember. Okay, so that is it. Next, problem example. Does anyone have any questions before we continue with problem example? Is everyone still okay? okay. Is everyone asleep? Okay. 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 So okay. Questions? No questions? Okay. Eh? All right. I'm going to continue. So this is a problem example I got from a, from our textbook. Uh, you can access it on Web Design eBook. So this is a wave traveling in the positive x direction. So this is a wave. It is traveling to the right. Find the amplitude, wavelength, speed, and period. 
find the amplitude A wavelength lambda speed V and period T of the wave if it has a frequency of 8 hertz. So frequency is 8 hertz. And then it gives you dx at the point delta x equals to 40 centimeter. So this guy is 40 centimeter. And your dy at the point delta y is 15 centimeter. Okay, so let's do this together. What is the amplitude? This is easy. What's the amplitude? Is it 30? 15. 15. 15, correct. It's not 30, yeah? It's not like the whole entire thing. So it's just 15 from the equilibrium. Remember the definition. Amplitude is the displacement, the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. So if you're not sure, identify your equilibrium position. It's always that axis at the point x equals to, sorry, y equals to zero. And this is your maximum displacement. It should be the same. Either at any point you take it, the maximum displacement will be the same. So this is going to be 15 centimeter. So the amplitude is 15 centimeter. Next one, speed. What is our speed? How can I find the speed? Anyone wants to try? This is 40 centimeter. V equals to F lambda. V equals to F lambda. So we try that. So our F is eight. Our lambda, what is our lambda? 40. 40. 40. Sure? Yes. Okay, sure. Yes. Eh? It completes one cycle. So, kita punya initial point kat sini. So, we have to go through four amplitudes to complete one cycle. One, two, three, four. So, four amplitudes. So, this is where you should stop. This is one cycle. So, betul lah, 40. So this is going to be 40 centimeter, but you have to use it in SI unit. So 0 0.4. This is per second. This is meter. Uh, wavelength is in meter and your frequency is per second or hertz. So 8 times 0 0.4 is... Oops, 8 times 0 3.2. 3.2, thank you. And the unit is... The unit is... Meter per second. Meter per second. So the lambda is in meter. The frequency is per second. So you get meter per second as your speed, which is correct. Um, betul. So next is period. What is our period? What is period? One over F. One over F. So one over eight is just something. Seconds. One over eight. So 0 0.125 seconds okay so the time taken to complete one cycle is 0 0.125 seconds that's quite fast which is normal because wave is fast 0 0.125 seconds okay um habis dah this example okay next one a wave has a wavelength of three meter so this is our wavelength Calculate the frequency of the wave. It's asking us to find frequency if it is a sound wave and a light wave. So we have two types of wave here. Satu sound, satu light. Take the speed of sound. Vs as 343 meter per second. And V light as... Apa ni? Oh, say, um, what is that? Three point. I think it is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Ni saya yang copy. Saya silap copy ni. Let me correct that. Um, eight. I think. I think that is the speed of light. Betul kot. So we're going to roll with it. Eh, kenapa dia hilang pula? Why? Draw. This is S. Okay. So this is our speed of sound, 343. Three. This is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. It's asking us to find the F. What equation should we use? V equals to F lambda. 
B equals to F lambda still. So it should be straightforward lah sebenarnya. 3, 4, 3 for sound. This is already in SI unit, so we're good. We have the F, we don't know what the F is. We have the lambda, which is 3. So F for sound is whatever that is. Okay, and then we have our F for light, sorry, V for light. F for light, lambda is the same. So V is 3 times 10 to the 8. F is unknown. Our lambda is 3. So, uh, someone is writing something. Okay, thank you, Aida. This is for frequency of sound, 114.33. Betul ke? What about the frequency of light? Ada orang buat tak? So this is quite straightforward lah, just using the uh, equation. So this is 10 to the 8 hertz, right? So 3 divided by 3. Okay, next one. Okay, so now we're talking about wave reflection. Let's do a little recap before we continue. Sebab macam, tak banyak sangat, but banyak sikit dari biasa. So what did we talk about? We talked about how wave ataupun pulse is the propagation of energy and not the matter, not the transfer of matter. So despite we see like it's moving to the right, but what is moving is only the energy or the disturbance. The particles remain where it is. It can either go left and right or up and down. If the particle is moving up and down, therefore it is a transverse wave because it is perpendicular to the wave motion. And for a longitudinal wave, it is going left and right, left and right, compression and stretching. And the wave motion is parallel to that wave. I mean, parallel to that particle motion. 1 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, Aida is saying, Doctor, I think it is 1 times 10 to the power of 8 yang tadi tu. Okay, let me see. Ha -ha, betul lah kan? 10 to the 8. So it's the same as 1 times 10 to the 8. Sama je. You're right. It is the same. So 1 uh, one times 10 to the 8. Why can't I draw suddenly? What happened? Hey, what happened? Can't draw. This is a sad day for all of us because I can't draw. Uh, what is going on? Uh, don't die. It's still not working. Kejap, eh? Saya restart. Stop sharing. I think I accidentally pressed something that I don't know what it is. Eh, no, don't save. Don't save. And so, okay. Save. Can I draw now? Okay, really. Share screen. Okay, back. We are back. Okay, sorry about that. Macam biasa lah, technical issues. So, alamak hilang semua. Tak apa. So, um, the answer just now was 1 times 10 to the 8 or 10 to the 8. It's the same thing. And we're talking about uh, we were doing a little mini, we're doing a little recap, right? Mm. Okay, we talked about this one. And then we know that um, both the transverse and longitudinal wave can be described by a sinusoidal uh, curve. So the crest corresponds to the compression part ataupun the high density part. Or for a transverse wave, it corresponds to the maximum displacement of the particle. And for a 
draw, it corresponds to the low density ataupun stretching of a longitudinal pulse, pulse. And for a transverse, it just simply means the minimum displacement of the particle. Okay, so dua-dua boleh pakai sinusoidal curve. Dua-dua boleh describe mathematically by a sinusoidal equation later on. Okay, and then we talked about what is amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. And also what is wavelength? Wavelength is the distance for to complete one cycle. So one cycle is one period. You achieve it in one period. And from there, we derive V equals to lambda F. So that is it so far. Okay, so now we're talking about wave reflection across different mediums. So let's take a look at this diagram first. Okay, so this is an incident pulse. I'm flicking the string, a pulse happens, it transfers ataupun it propagates to the right. Propagates means move, eh? moving. Propagates to the right, it moves to the right. And this is a fixed end, this is a wall. So when it encounters the wall, what happens is that it is reflected. It is reflected and it becomes inverted. So now it becomes a reflected pulse. You started with this shape, you encounter the wall, which is a different medium. And this medium is fixed. And then your reflected pulse will become inverted. So this is not always the case. When we have, when we encounter a boundary that is not fixed like a wall, such as this ring. Okay, kenapa ring ni tak sama dengan wall? Sebab string ni, dia sebenarnya, sebelah dia tu udara. Sebelah, macam mana cakap? When you zoom in into that ring, there is a place between the rod and the ring and it is just air, right? So we are going to say that this is not a fixed end. The string can move about um, even though dia berlanggar dengan ring tu, faham tak? So you flick it, the, there is air over there, so it's not fixed. This is what I'm trying to, uh, trying to tell you. This is not fixed. Eh? If it was fixed, then there wouldn't be any ring. It would just be the rod. Tapi disebabkan dia ada ring, the string is connected to the ring. Therefore, between the ring and the rod, there is some air. So we are saying that they are not fixed. It can move about. Okay, so this is the wall. This was fixed situation. For a, six situ for a fixed situation, the pulse will be inverted when it is reflected. But for something that is not fixed like this ring, when you flick the string and it reflects, it reflects the same shape. It's not inverted. Punya lah susah nak cerita kan? Simple je sebenarnya. So the reflection of a traveling wave at the fixed end of a stretched string is inverted and for a free end it is not inverted okay next one so properties of reflected wave it can it maintains the same wavelength it maintains the same frequency same lambda same f same v v equals to f lambda semua ni sama the shape of the wave however can be different it can be inverted or non-inverted Kalau inverted, it means that you encountered a fixed, a fixed boundary. If it is not inverted, you encountered a non-fixed boundary such as air, such as the ring and the rod lah. Dia boleh bergerak. And then when you are reflecting the wave from a high medium, sorry, from a high density medium to a low, for example, this string, and this is air. Sebab kat tengah-tengah ni air kan? So this is high density compared to air. This is low density. When, when your wave encounters from high to low, the shape remains and the wave is not inverted. So this is just like a recap. But it's telling you that kenapa dia tak inverted? Kenapa... Kenapa ada perbezaan antara fixed dengan non-fixed is because of the density. So when you are, when your wave encounters a low density, it is not going to be inverted. But when you encounter the wall, 
the wall is obviously high density compared to your string. This is low density. So therefore, it is going to be inverted. Okay. So this is a animation. Let's see. It's going quite slow. It needs to be faster. Look here. What's going on here? Surprise. So one is inverted. One is not inverted. Okay, tu saja. Macam anti-climax juga lah animation ni. Sebab slow sangat. Okay, next. Mm, we already talked about this one. This one as well. Okay, so um, just now we talked about reflection of a wave when it encounters a boundary. One was a fixed position ataupun low to high density and one was non-fixed position which is from high density to low density, right? So about the non-fixed to the basically is air. So air is low density. Now what happens when wave propagates across different medium? Just now it was reflection. Now we're talking about transmission of the wave. So when traveling wave reaches a boundary of different media, part of it is reflected. And when it is reflected, it travels back into the same medium. Travels back into same medium. Wow, guru Inglisan. Into the same medium. And color transmission, it means that it travels from one medium. Let's say this is medium one. And this is, oh, this is medium one. And this is going to be medium two. It has to have different properties. Two wajib. If you say that there is a boundary, the boundary has to be, be between two different mediums. If they are not two different mediums, then it will not be called a boundary. It's just one medium. So if you have a boundary, it really means that you have two different types of medium. So around low density ke, so around high density ke, so around low density ke, so around high density ke. Tak kisah. Asalkan ada perbezaan to make that boundary. Boundary ni, apa? Boundary is, what is boundary in Malay? I don't know. Boundary in Malay. Penghadang. Penghadang doesn't sound right. Is there another word for that? Penghadang, it does translate correctly, but in this context, tak. Apa lah? Batas. Sempadan. Sempadan betul tak? Sempadan. 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 That sounds right, right? Okay. So, sempadan between medium 1 and medium 2. Kena berbeza. Sebab tu dia jadi sempadan. Kalau sama je, yang ni M1, yang ni pun M1, nak pun sempadan ke benda kan? So, it's basically the same country. There's no sempadan here. So, it has to have different properties. So, when you have different properties, two things can happen, either reflection or transmission. Reflection, kita dah cakap tadi, uh, fix, uh, sorry, a string to fix ataupun string to non-fix and then transmission, either kita akan discuss. So for transmission, it is across a boundary of different mediums, only some is transmitted, only some. It is always upright. It is always upright. It follows the same shape as the incident pulse ataupun incident wave. It is never reversed. Meaning to say that if your pulse was moving to the right, therefore in the new medium, it will also travel to the right. It's not going to travel to the left. So your motion is this way. Your motion in the second boundary is also to the right. It is not reversed. Eh? Okay, so there is a decrease in amplitude because only some is transmitted. Part of it, part of it can be reflected. And there is a change in wavelength. However, it maintains the same frequency. So for your V equals to lambda F, it changes wavelength and it changes speed. But your frequency is the same. This is for transmission. Transmitted wave. <clears throat> But for our reflected wave, 
our v equals to lambda f is all the same. The speed, the lambda, the f is all the same when we're talking about the reflection because kita assume semua reflected. But for cases where there is transmission, we are assuming that part of it is reflected, part of it is transmitted. But for reflection, kita assume stratus stratus reflected. Okay, uh, that's just an assumption. <clears throat> that is why kita assume everything maintains the same, even the amplitude, because we are assuming 100% reflection. Okay, <clears throat> an example of reflected wave and transmitted wave is just like a light wave entering air to glass medium. You know that it bends. This is because the speed and the, the speed and the wavelength changes despite the frequency is being maintained. So because the speed and lambda changes, that is why you see that bending happening in the glass. It is called refraction. But basically, refraction is the transmission of wave, wave of light, light wave. <clears throat> but sometimes the, the light is reflected. So this is reflection. This is reflection. Air. This is glass. Okay, so this is reflection. And this is refraction, ataupun kita cakap transmission in this case. Okay, so for reflect refraction or transmission, you know that the lambda and the speed changes. That is why you have that bending. And for reflection, you know that everything is maintained uh, for a hundred percent reflection. But if part of it is transmitted, part of it is reflected, of course, kena ada perubahan sikit lah dari segi amplitude sebab ada pengurangan. So here you can say that um, the, the V is the same, the F is the same, apa? lambda is the same, but the A is not, the amplitude. Eh? Okay, amplitude is not. But basically what you need to remember is this guy is basically the same lah. Sebab for our exam or for our syllabus, we are talking about 100% reflection. For transmission, we are assuming part of it reflected, part of it transmitted. Okay, so these are the things that you need to remember. So this is just an example lah for real life scenario. And another type of real life scenario of uh, wave transmission is wave traveling in strings from lower, from smaller to bigger size. I don't know what that is. Abaikan jelah. So let's go with this example. Okay, so if I manage to remember any um, examples on waves in real life, I'll tell you. Okay, so waves can also be represented as a sine curve. Let's take a break first. So about that's a jump. Seven minute break. Get your water, get your food. Go to the toilet, come back at 3.05. Kalau soalan boleh tanya, kita akan cakap waves in terms of math, in terms of math, which is intense, so we need a break.
Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back. I hope you are back. Um, so Web Assign Chapter 8 and Chapter 9 is already up. Uh, your Chapter 8 is due this Sunday. So Chapter 8 kita dah belajar lama dah kan? And then your Chapter 9 is due on Wednesday. If you need more time, you can tell me. But try your best first. Um, sebab kita banyak lagi nak cover ni and we, I'm also trying to speed up things for your quiz. So make sure you complete this uh, so that boleh focus on the quiz later on on week 18. Confirm week 18 kita punya quiz. Quiz is on chapter 11 and chapter 12. Masa dan tarikh tak ditetapkan lagi. I will inform you guys when we already know. But confirm week 18. So week 18 though, most likely we are going to start learning chapter 12 lah. So uh, that is also a learning week. We haven't started the study week yet. So sambil belajar tu sambil quiz. So we don't know how that's going to go yet. But don't worry. Uh, I just want everyone to finish your assignments as soon as possible so that we can focus on the finals later on, okay? And also the quiz. So try your best to complete it. Uh, if you if you can, don't ask for extension. Cuba siapkan sebab banyak lagi benda coming in the way. So nanti akan accumulate and cause trouble for you. Okay. So subject line pun I'm sure uh, they are also trying to speed up things as well. So let me know if if it gets too difficult let me know. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Uh, and also uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9 so I learned hanya 11, 12 je. So should be okay. It's not that much. Okay. So let's continue. Um, so someone asked me if I can explain again what is what does it mean uh, for a wave to be transmitted partially? Okay, let's talk about it. So, new slide. Let me draw. So, I told you when we have two boundaries, this, is, um, this boundary is not good. So, we have this boundary, okay, and we have a traveling wave. So, this is our equilibrium position. And whatever this is, is going to be our amplitude, positive A, negative A. I'm just labeling it. And this is going to be going to be with respect to time. So the wave is traveling in terms of time. And this is our boundary, which means that we have medium one and also medium two. These are two different mediums. Now, when I talked about reflection, let's draw this uh, with using a highlighter to represent our wave. When we talked about reflection, I told you when the wave travels, this is not the right way to draw it. So maximum displacement like that. Okay, so when it encounters the boundary, it will be reflected 100%. And when it reflects 100%, the properties is that V, lambda, and F are all the same. We are assuming 100% reflection, which means that no energy is lost. Semua dipantulkan balik. Therefore, the amplitude is also the same. This is we are assuming 100% reflection lah. 100% reflection. No energy loss because wave is energy. No energy is lost. <clears throat> no energy loss lah. No energy loss, therefore amplitude is also the same. Is the same. Okay, so this 100% reflection eh. So V, lambda and F are all the same. However, we had two conditions. Uh, one was if it reflected at a fixed boundary, Okay, fixed, fixed boundary, it will be inverted. And if it is a non-fixed boundary, such as air, it will be the same. It's not non-inverted lah, basically the same shape, non-inverted. The shape is maintained. This is... Shape is maintained. Whether you are inverted or not inverted, the shape is the same. 
Okay, so this is reflection. Eh? So reflection is in orange and pink. Now we're going to talk about transmission. So when we talk about transmission, we are assuming that part of it, we have a wave. This is my wave, number, number blue, uh, color blue. It is traveling. And when it is traveling, some of it is going to be transmitted. Let me make a different wave altogether. So when it travels to the different medium, it is transmitted, but now it is smaller. Kenapa dia smaller? Lemak tak sama pula. I'm trying to maintain the same amplitude, but it's not working. Kejap. Let me, give me some time. Sakit tangan. Okay, so when the wave is transmitted, we are assuming some of the energy is lost. Kenapa dia lost? Sebab ada yang patah balik jadi reflection. Ada yang transmitted. So, kalau only 50% is transmitted, then 50%, the other 50% is reflected. This is why we say that the transmitted wave decreases in amplitude. Sebab dia kekurangan tenaga lah kan, decreases in amplitude. Okay, amplitude. And what else? It changes speed. Changes speed and wavelength. But the frequency is the same. But F is the same. What else? It is always upright. Always upright. Maksudnya, it is not inverted. Sama je. Masih menegak, not inverted, never reversed. If it is traveling to the right, it is traveling to the right. If the incident pulse is traveling to the left, it will follow that traveling to the left, the motion. Never reversed. Okay, so again, the transmitted wave ni, kita assume when we have an incident pulse, incident pulse yang warna biru ni, separuh transmitted, separuh lagi reflected. So... I don't know, macam ni lah kot, huru haranya. But that is your reflected wave. Some is transmitted, some is reflected. When I was talking about reflection, I assumed that it was 100%. Transmission tak ada dalam scenario tu. This was 100% reflection. But when we're talking about transmission, I'm assuming that some of it is reflected, some of it is transmitted. Dia pecah lah. Dia pecah, seorang jadi transmitted, seorang jadi reflected. Okay, I hope that's not too confusing. Don't worry about it. You just have to memorize um, apa yang terjadi to the property of the wave when it is reflected and what is what happens to the property of the wave when it is transmitted. You have to know the characteristics. And apa lagi? Soalan yang boleh berkaitan dengan wave ni. Um, yang tu je lah. Properties tu je. You just have to remember the properties. Okay. And also inverted berlaku bila, non-inverted berlaku bila, stuff like that. Okay. Moving on. So wave can be represented as a sine curve. I told you before, uh, either transverse or longitudinal, you can describe it as a sinusoidal curve. And a sinusoidal curve can be represented mathematically. Uh, yes. So a longitudinal wave can also be represented as a sine curve. Compressions correspond to crests and stretches correspond to troughs. We already know this. Also called density waves or pressure waves. So this is the mathematical representation of a traveling wave. So y equals to a sine kx plus minus omega t. So y is the the displacement, the the displacement in the y axis. Displacement in y axis, and this is your amplitude. What do you guys A is your amplitude. K is the wave number. It is given by two pi over lambda. So this is going to be 2 pi over lambda. And your omega is your angular speed. Angular speed is radians per second. This is radians and this is second, 2 pi over t. So look at this equation. K is 2 pi over lambda and x is something that is in meters. So lambda is in meter, x is in meter. This cancels out to give me radians. Omega is 2 pi over t. t is in seconds. This is also in second. I will enter whatever second that is 
the property of the wave into this equation. And second will cancel out with second. I'm left with this guy. Also radians. So what am I left with? Sine of something that is in radian. So use your calculator in radian mode when you're doing this type of problems. So your calculator has two modes. One is degrees, one is radians. Take note to change it to radians because we're dealing with radians here. So again, A is your amplitude. Sine is just sine. K is your wave number. X is the distance that later on kita akan figure out nak letak apa dalam ni. Plus minus, also we're going to talk about that. Omega is your angular speed of the wave. And T is the time. Oh, ada kat sini. The minus sign is for waves moving in the positive x direction. So this is your this is your wave. It's moving to the right. So you are going to say that this guy has the minus sign. So equation dia adalah A sine kx minus omega t. Walaupun dia gerak ke kanan, you use the minus sign. Dia terbalik eh. And then if your wave is moving to the left, this is your axis, it is moving this way. So your equation becomes y. A sine om kx plus omega t. Doesn't really make sense but dia memang terbalik. Okay, so that is the sine convention for waves. And then we have, based on that mathematical representation that we talked about just now, we can actually plot two types of curve. Okay, the first one is displacement. Displacement versus time graph. Okay, displacement versus time graph. Displacement versus time graph. Eh? So Y versus T. Y versus T. T is in time or seconds and you can also write it in period to make your life easy. So you know that one cycle is one period. So this is one T. One cycle is one period, two T. One cycle is one period, three T. So this is in seconds. So whatever period, let's say you're, you complete one cycle in 10 seconds. So this would be 10. This would be 20. This would be 30. You can also write it as capital T. Boleh. Asalkan you define T is equal to 10 second. You can do that. So you have your first one which is displacement versus time. Displacement Y and time is T. And then from the same equation, same equation eh, you plug in T equals to zero. So you are left with, you plug in T equals to zero, you are left with Y equals to A sine Kx. So but when you plug in t equals to zero, this basically cancels out, becomes zero, right? So you are left with y equals to a sine kx. So now you can plot y versus x plot. So this is your y versus x plot. What is x? x is lambda atau point distance. So this is going to be in meter. So write the no no lah. Okay, x meter. This guy is in second. From the same equation. Eh? So again, I'm going to repeat myself here. Sebab selalunya orang blur kat sini. What's going on? Tiba-tiba ada dua plot. So here I'm going to tell you again. From the same equation. Eh? From the same equation. Where's my pen? From the same equation. You get two types of plot. This is where people selalunya kantoi. Okay, listen to me. Y equals to A sine Kx minus omega T. When your x is equal to zero, you cancel this out. You plot your y t graph. This is your y t graph. Y versus time. And then when your t is equal to zero, you cancel that out. You get y equals to a sine kx. Y versus x graph. So you get two types of graph depending on what is equal to zero. Color y t graph, your x is equal to zero. Kalau your y x graph, your time is equal to zero. Okay. So this is a graphical representation. Uh, one cycle is one period. We know this. And also one cycle is one lambda. So this is for y t graph. And this is for y x graph. One is displacement versus time graph. So your x axis is time or period. And one is y 
X graph ataupun displacement versus di distance. Displacement versus distance ataupun distance versus distance. Boleh lah, dua-dua boleh. So displacement versus distance, distance versus distance, I don't know. Just Y versus X. Eh? So Y, X, so this is in meters and this is going to be one cycle is one lambda. If you know what your lambda is, let's say your lambda is five. Lambda is five. So this is five meter. This is 10 meter. So this is how you plot it. Oh, one more thing. Your A is whatever value that is inside your equation. So this is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. Okay, so positive A up here, negative A down here. Okay. And then the last term that I'm going to introduce to you guys for today is angle phi. Phi or phi? Phi, good. Let's call it phi first. Phi, eh? I hope I'm right. Forgot this name. So the angle phi is a phase shift. Phase shift. Added to the function. Added to the function. What function? This function. A sine kx minus plus omega t. So this function dah susah dah. Rampak macam susah dah. Dia nak tambah lagi phi tu. Kenapa? Because sometimes they want to change the initial condition of the wave. They want to change the initial condition of the wave. So let's say your wave is y equals to a sin blah 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 kan. So if it starts at time equals to zero, then it's just basically like this normal thing lah. It's normal, a normal sine curve. But you don't want this. You don't want this wave. You said, okay, my wave is different. I want it to be different than everyone else because I'm special. So, dia tambah phi ni. Dia tambah phi plus 2 pi. When you add 2 pi ataupun a, a phase shift, a positive phase shift, it means that your wave starts early. When you add something, when you add a phase shift, your wave starts early by that amount. If you add it 2 pi, your wave starts early by 2 pi. If you minus pi, your wave starts later. Starts later. It starts later than, um, than, the, than the reference wave. And then if you just have unknown here, kita tak tahu apa value dia, let's say it's a plus, so you know that this wave starts early by this angle. You don't know what it is, but you can just write, plot it like this. Boleh juga. So again, when I add the phi angle, I am actually referring it to the reference wave. This is my reference wave. When I add 2 pi, my reference wave have, has this equation. When I add 2 pi, I change this reference equation. I am actually referring my plot to this reference. So plus 2 pi, the awal daripada reference wave. The awal daripada reference wave. Eh? And then minus pi, the lambat daripada reference wave. The lambat, the start lambat. Bentuk dia sepatutnya sama. Kenapa lain? Kejap. Kejap eh. Hmm, it should have the same shape to the reference. So this actually should be like this. Sebab dia start lambat kan? Macam tu. Hmm, I'm going to double confirm on this one. I'll check back on this. Bentuk dia. But I'm quite sure I'm correct. But we don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm just going to check later. Okay, so again, phi is added to change your initial condition. Now, if your function is y equals to a sine ks minus omega t blah blah blah, can you change your function to become cosine? Boleh, boleh ke tak? Boleh tak? Can a sine be changed to a cosine? How does the cosine look like? I know this is like math gila kan? I don't know. But I have to tell you. Okay, so cosine, um, it starts at cosine zero, it is one, right? At cosine, cosine dalam kurungan kosong is equal to one. So it, rupa cosine macam ni. Betul tak? Rupa cosine macam tu. I 
hook I'm right. Okay, one, two, three, four. Betul. Okay, four amplitudes. One cycle. Betul, eh? Okay, so cosine looks like that. A sine looks like the red guy. Can I relate a cosine and a sine curve? Boleh ke tak boleh? Starts later, starts later. Boleh. Boleh. Macam mana? Tambah fee lah kan? You just have to add that fee to make it a cosine. And then you can relate it. So let's say I have A sine KX minus omega and I have A cosine KX minus omega. I want to relate these two. I want to represent cosine in terms of sine ataupun sine in terms of cosine. What do I do? I need to add phi into my sine to make it equal to cosine. So kalau my cosine starts earlier by, how, what is this? T over 4, lambda over 4. Lambda over 4 is pi over 4, pi over 4. Is it? No, it's pi over 2. So, A cosine kx minus omega t is equal to A sine kx minus t. It starts later, so it's going to be a positive pi over 2. So, you can relate it like that. Is it important? Not really. But I'm just telling you. Okay, so cosine, uh, sine function boleh ditukar jadi cosine. So, sometimes your question can become cosine tapi dia takkan suruh trans, translate jadi sine lah. it's not going to ask you that but i'm just telling you guys don't panic if they give you a function of cosine because it's just a, a wave function so you can get questions in terms of sine you can get questions in terms of cosine don't panic just plot according to the uh, trigonometry function okay and follow whatever parameters that they give you okay let's do an example Okay, summary. To find the amplitude, wavelength, period and frequency of a sinusoidal wave, write down the wave function in the form y equals to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi if there is a phase. The amplitude, okay, kat sini dia tulis y dalam kurungan xt. Eh? It means y is a function of x and t. Itu saja maksud dia. Y, X, T, it means Y is a function of X and T. Which is right. It is a function of X and T. That is what it means. And then the amplitude can be read straight from the equation and it is simply A. The period of the wave can be derived from the angular frequency. So we have whatever value omega is, you can find out what is the period and then the frequency can be found using F equals to 1 over T. And then the wavelength can be found using the wave number, 2 pi over lambda. These are the equations that you need to remember for this function. Okay. How much time do we have left? Okay, we have about half an hour. A progressive wave equation is given as y as a function of x and t equals to 5 sine 2 pi t plus pi x. Where x, is in, x and y is in meters and t is in time seconds and t is time in seconds. Plot its y-x graph for t equals to zero over two cycles. Okay, first question, what is my k over here? What is my k? Hmm, let's write the generic equation. y equals to a sine kx minus plus omega t. What is my k? No one? Everyone's confused. Zero. K is zero. Pi? Pi. 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 K is pi. Bukan zero eh. Kerja saya. So k, uh, what you do is, you go for, you write down the generic equation yang kita belajar tadi. You match it. So A is 5, K is, Kx right, so K is pi and omega is 2 pi. You match it like that. So when you, when they ask you what is the A, what is the amplitude, it is 5. So let's write, the, write down the answer. So A is 5 meters, 
because everything is in meters here. Amplitude is also in meters. Y is in meters, so A is also meter. And then what next? We have K. K is pi. K is pi. Pi to pi over lambda to pi over lambda. Okay, never mind. K is pi. And then we have our omega is 2 pi. And then what else, what other info do we have? Phi is not there, so it's a zero. So that is zero. Ada lagi tak? Okay, tadi tu saja. So now it's asking us, plot its y-x graph for t equals to zero. So now using that equation, a sine, sorry, y equals to five, y equals to five sine two pi t plus pi x and it's telling you t is equal to zero therefore this guy is zero you're left with five y equals to five sine pi x y equals to five sine pi x so if my k is pi my omega is two pi what is my P and my F. What is my lambda? Oh, banyaknya benda nak kena fikir. Okay, so K is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So let's solve that. This is 2 pi over lambda. So 2 pi over lambda is equal to pi. Cancel out. So lambda is basically 2 meter. And then omega is Omega is 2 pi over t. So 2 pi over t equals to 2 pi. Cancel out. I get t as 1 second. So my wave is 2 meter in length. The 2 meter in distance. And it completes one cycle in one second. If it asks me to, to plot it over two cycles. So I have two periods, which is 2. Betul ke saya kira ni? 2 pi over t is omega, betul. t is 1 second. Okay. 2 pi over lambda. So lambda is 2. Okay, betul. Lambda is 2 and t is 1 second. So if I'm going to plot it, ooh, this is too much. Okay, y, sorry, x. This is my y. Okay, x is in this distance. I want to plot it over 2 cycles. Kenapa nak ada negative x axis? Tak perlu. So this is how you plot it. Okay, why? I have my positive a. A is 5. Minus a is minus 5. Macam huru hara kan? Kejap. Dah saya susun sikit. Hmm. No. Okay, let's just try it somewhere else. Okay, so lambda is 2 meter and t is 1 second. Eh? Okay, no problem. Now let's draw our plot. So this is minus 5 and this is 5. This is our amplitude, the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. And our wavelength is, wavelength is 2 meter. I'm plotting y versus x. What should be the values here? What's in Nak letak apa ni? Saya tak tahu. This is zero. I know that. What should I put as my x axis? Lambda. Lambda, right? So lambda, I can write it lambda like this. Or I can put the actual value which is 2. Kita buat actual value lah. Eh? So 2 meter and 4. It wants 2 cycles. So I have to put in 2 cycles here lah. So bagi 2 je. Nak saya nak lukis elok-elok. So this is going to be my wave. One cycle. Two cycle. Buruknya. Okay, so that is your wave. Let's see. Betul. Yay. So A is 5, omega is 2 pi, K is pi. So you get your T as 1 second. Your lambda as 2 meter. One second. So, dia nak suruh kita plot Y versus X. So, kita akan pakai lambda. Jangan pakai period. Dia tak nak. 
So y versus x. So lambda, one cycle is two meter. So one cycle is two meter. One cycle, four meter. Sorry, another cycle is four seconds. Four meter. So this is two cycles. Kalau dia minta three cycle, lukis lah three cycle. Kalau dia minta satu je, satu lah. Okay, so the more the better. Kalau dia tak specify, just write two cycles. Okay, to make sure that you won't lose any marks. Okay, next one. Does anyone have any question? Was that okay? Faham ke? Y versus X. Just one more example and then we're done. Any questions? No? Okay, I'm going to continue. Okay, a wave is described by, is described by Y equals to 0 0.002 sine. 0 0.5 X plus 6 to 8 T. Determine its direction, wavelength, period, and also plot its yt and yx graph. Okay, saya nak panggil lah, panggil nama. Sebab dah lama tak bercakap dengan korang. Okay, so can I ask Adli, is Adli there? Adli, hello, hello. I'm calling from Earth. Adli tak ada. Adli? Tak ada. Okay. So Adli dah tidur dekat space. Um, is Aliman Zafran here? Yes, okay. Okay. So what is the direction of my wave? Is it to, is it in the positive x direction or negative x direction? Based on this equation. Uh, negative x direction. Negative x direction. Dia terbalik eh. Thank you. Betul. So it is negative X direction is moving to the left. Okay, next one. Alisa, can you tell me what the wavelength is? Ataupun cara nak cari wavelength. How do we find the wavelength? Is Alisa there? Alisa? Alisa is not there? Okay, Akila. Akila, are you there? Ada check di sini. Sorry doktor tadi tak connect mic. Okay, okay. Kita go for Adli eh. Okay, Adli, can you tell me how to find the wavelength? Wavelength? Wavelength dia. Dalam equation ni. Okay, saya bagi hint eh. So, generic equation dia Y equals to A sin Kx plus omega T. Kat mana lambda dalam equation ni? Ataupun kat mana wavelength dalam equation ni? Dalam K ke dalam omega? Lambda. Hmm. Lambda is wavelength. Is my lambda inside K or is it inside omega? Ada orang nak tolong Adli tak? Inside K. 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 Okay. So K is actually 2 pi over lambda. So if you know what your value K is, you will know what your lambda is. So in this case, your K is 0 0.5. Macam mana saya tahu? Saya matchkan dia. This one ada T, dia adalah omega. This one is kat depan sign, dia adalah A. Okay. So 2 pi over uh, 0. Apa ni? 0.5 will give me my lambda which is 4 pi. Lambda is 4 pi in distance. This is in meter. Okay, next one. Faris, what is my period? What is my period, Faris? Are you there? Uh, ada, ada, ada. Okay. Macam mana cari uh, saya kira dia. Uh, guna omega. Okay, omega is equal to? Omega equal to 2 pi over t. 2 pi over t. So what is the omega in this case? Uh, 6 to 8. 6 to 8. So 6 to 8. So it, p is just 2 pi divided by 6 to 8. And this should be in seconds. 
Okay. Uh, what's the answer? 2 pi divided by 6 to 8. 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Thank you. 0 0.01 seconds. So your wave is to complete one cycle, it takes 0 0.01 second. And the distance of one cycle is 4 pi. Meter eh. Walaupun pi ni macam radian but it is in meter. Pi is just a number. 3.142 blah blah blah. I don't know. Times 4. That is your value. Okay, so now we're going to plot the yt graph and also yx graph. Let's do that together. This is the last example for this chapter and then we're done. So again, draw your yt graph and your yx graph. Okay, so the first one, if you want to plot your yt graph, you need to make your x as zero. Ataupun if you don't want to use the equation, you just want to use whatever that this you already found, you can do that as well. So we can, let's do both. So first, I'm going to do yt graph. Maksudnya x kena kosong. So buang yang ni, y equals to 0 0.002628t. So this is the equation that we'll, we will plot over here. And yang kita tahu, the period for one cycle is 0 0.01. The amplitude is 0 0.002. So we can plot that here. 0 0.002 minus 0 0.002. So that is my amplitude. And then I want to mark my periods. Let's do two cycles. One period is 0 0.01. So I'm going to write that down. 0 0.02. So this is in terms of second. And this is in meters. This is displacement. So now I'm going to plot the graph. Kecilnya. Um, so it looks like that. Oh, oh, this is hard. Kejap eh. Kecil sangatlah ruang pun. Boleh lah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Tak kena. But you get the idea. It's two cycles. So one cycle is 0 0.01. It has to touch the amplitude. The amplitude should be labelled according to the value in your equation. So, kena label semua nombor ni. Okay, next one. Y versus X. So, okay. Sabar jat, eh? Yang the first one ni, what I'm plotting is 0 0.002628T. This is mathematical description of this wave. Okay, so the mathematical description of the YX wave is going to be 0 0.002. The t is going to be 0, so this is going to be 0 0.5x. This is what I'm trying to plot for the yx curve, yx plot. So untuk yx, kita nak plot lambda. So it has to be 1 lambda and 2 lambda over here. This is going to be in meters. This is going to be in meters as well. My lambda is 4 pi. And just write 4 pi is the value, no problem. Then this is going to be 8 pi. And I need to label my amplitude 0 0.002 minus 0 0.002. Sama je step dia, cuma perbezaan antara x axis. So, I'm going to try my best. No, this is not my best. It's ugly, but it is my best. So, terima lah. Okay, it's very ugly. So, this is how you plot it. Okay, so using all the information that you have from the function, extract it first. And then use it in your plots. Okay, so this is one cycle, two cycle, one cycle, two cycle, y versus x, y versus t, the end. Any questions for chapter 9? No questions? Okay, have a great rest of the day. Uh, don't forget your web design. There's only like 20-ish questions for both chapters. Try to your best to finish it so that nanti kita nak focus kat quiz and also the final exam. Okay, so all the best. Have a great rest of the day. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you Doctor. Welcome. Bye -bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Take care.